and welcome back to the In The Country podcast. I'm your host, Holly Ella, and this week I'm going solo again to bring you the latest episode. This is your exclusive space for all things quintessentially country, and I have so enjoyed joining you outdoors in the country, whilst you're walking the dogs, riding, whilst you're working in the office, taking the kids to school, you know, so many different things. Um, And I've really enjoyed it so far. So here's to another week and I hope you enjoy it. So for this week's episode, I thought that given that March is International Women's Month and Sunday just passed was International Women's Day, I thought I'd talk a little bit about kind of what inspiration means to me. And I thought I would share with you some women who I am inspired by. And I have put the links to each of these women's um, Instagram accounts in the description of this podcast episode and I will be tagging them on Instagram so that you can discover these inspirational women too if you haven't already. Let's dive on in. What does inspiration mean? Now the dictionary definition says that it is the process of being mentally stimulated to do or feel something um, and especially to do something creative. Now if that resonates with you then fabulous but to me I think inspiration, there's so many different forms of inspiration and whether that's kind of materialistic in terms of um, you're inspired to reach kind of goals um, like like Tara was talking about in the previous episode about her vision board how she's put her car on there um, her holiday on there they're all kind of materialistic goals um, to be or to aspire to I suppose whereas kind of inspiration taking inspiration from somebody is to to kind of feel empowered by what it is they're doing or what they've achieved or you know the way they look there is so much to it and whether you are inspired by you know a shooter the 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 skill that they have a rider and how talented they are their achievements their kind of journey that they've taken to to get to where they are and you're inspired by that Um, You can be inspired by a singer, a business owner, um, and there's many, many, many of those I feel very inspired by, which I will be going into in a minute. Um, Or even, you know, as as a person, as an individual, the things that they've achieved, their lifestyle, um, you know, there's all sorts. Um, You've got, you know, um, fitness inspiration, there's so much to it, And, and whatever you know, inspiration means for you, it's great. And this is a month where you can really, really kind of hone in on that and feel that sense of empowerment and kind of feel inspired to go after that yourself, to achieve those goals, those, you know, the images that you want. There's so much to it. And really, you know, this is a month of empowerment to me inspiration and empowerment but but empowerment is is the really powerful key thing here um when you feel inspired you feel empowered to kind of do better to achieve more to reach those goals to finish that thing that you started or you said you were going to start there's there's so much to it and And essentially, you know, I'm inspired by people every single day with their stories when they write articles on their posts that I see on Instagram and interact with every day to people I meet in, in, you know, in the town. Um, And so, yeah, I really wanted to do something a little bit different this week, take a break from um, putting spring pages together and, and talk to you about the women that inspire me. One thing that I do really want to talk about before we get into um, the women that that I want to, you know, I want to share with you is that to feel inspired is a fantastic thing, and to inspire other people is an incredible thing too. But in the world that we live in, with social media being such a you know prevalent force on our lives, sometimes we can feel inspired. Um, in the wrong way or inspired by a false portrayal of of what reality is 
And so I think it's important when you're looking for inspiration or you're taking inspiration to to just weigh things up a little bit. Um, you know, when you look at somebody's lifestyle on Instagram, it isn't always as beautiful and as picture perfect as those little grid posts may seem. And often we can get really disheartened. And I was having a conversation with Kate, uh, my business partner the other day about just this, that someone's lifestyle may look so incredible, so aspirational, and the individual themselves may be so inspiring. Yet behind the scenes, you know, it's not picture perfect. They do live a normal life. Things do go wrong. They do have bad days and that makes them normal. Um, and so just be wary where you're taking your inspiration from, I think. Um, it's brilliant to kind of admire what somebody is doing, but don't necessarily feel like you're not doing as well as them or your life isn't looking as great as theirs. So. In terms of inspiration, I think look at the reality before you kind of set your heart on feeling inspired by that person. Don't just feel inspired by their images or their Instagram lifestyle because 99 times out of 100, that isn't the reality. You know, you're probably getting the, the 10% of those wonderful, wonderful moments. Um, out of the 90% that is is a normal person's life that we would we you and I would all connect with um, so I just wanted to touch on that I think before I go on and talk about you know these inspirational women that that I really really resonate with and connect with and and look at for for a source of inspiration um, so yes just keeping it real for a second bringing it back there um, just consider who you are inspired by and consider why you're inspired by them I think is a really key thing whether you know don't just let it be that you're inspired by their Instagram grid or their 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 lifestyle that it seems like they live be inspired by so much more by them as a person um, and their achievements not necessarily just the materialistic ones and actually uh, on the on the kind of topic of being wary about your inspiration and where you take that from. I think, especially in the creative sense, it's important to note that you can feel inspired by somebody's work or somebody's brand, um, somebody's business, but it is vital that you, as a person, don't copy. Um, there's, there's a huge temptation when you feel inspired to kind of take those ideas and make them your own or take those achievements or those you know the strategy the plan the branding and make it your own but the most important thing when you feel inspired is to is to you know just that feel inspired by what that business or that brand or that product is and use that inspiration to kind of on reflection think about your brand what you want to achieve and your goals and kind of work out how you can do it differently how you can take inspiration from what somebody else has already created and add to it you know how you can put your spin on it your your touch on it you know we all hear this you do you be original be unique and it is so important and you know i think there's a quote online that essentially says that you know no ideas are original anymore they all are a source of inspiration from somebody else. And okay, yes, we do all look at, you know, Pinterest is a fantastic example of, of people putting together inspiration boards for their own kind of creations, their own photos, their own goals, their own products, brands, branding, everything. But it is important to be original and never copy because it really doesn't do anybody any favours. Um, taking inspiration is an incredible thing and, and to be inspired by somebody is, is, is amazing. But just be careful what you do with that inspiration. Okay, so on to a lighter note um, and diving into the women that I am inspired by. Now, aside from my mum, who I am 
obviously inspired by on a daily basis and I couldn't do this podcast episode without shouting out her. (laughs) Um, She has raised three strong-willed, independent and totally sassy um, and very creative young women and you know she she helps me to no end with the magazine and the brand and she has been you know a source of literal inspiration with ideas and suggestions to me over the last four years so she is definitely an inspiration to me but on to the women um, that I want to kind of discuss with you, introduce to you, share with you um, and and just talk about because they are inspirational and this is a month where you know well we're shouting out women so let's empower one another. I want to share these these women with you and hope that you'll be able to you know if you haven't already discovered them, please, please, please go ahead, search them, find them and just engage with the amazing stuff that they're putting out and the amazing things that they're doing. Um, Because, you know, I couldn't be without them on the social kind of social world. They are incredible. And when I see their posts popping up or I see, you know, things that they're doing, it is just so inspiring. So here we go. Inspirational lady number one, and some of you may know her or have connected with her already is the one and only Victoria Knowles Lax. So Victoria is a 10 times award winning entrepreneur. She is the author of a best selling book, Make It Happen, and she is an action and accountability coach in the kind of world of transformation. So she helps women who are kind of feeling stuck um, move forward and scale up their business, kind of harness that great mindset, that transformation mindset and the can-do attitude and help them to succeed. Um, she is also the founder of the Chelsea Bun Club, the Shotgun and Chelsea Bun Club, um, which many of you have probably shot with before or are a member of. Um, and she's just a downright fantastic woman. Um, She is incredible, we've connected multiple times and every single time she is just brilliant. She is so genuine um, and you know she shares lots of tips on her Instagram account which I have linked in the description to this podcast episode so you can go ahead and find her. Um, But she's just, she's just brilliant Um, and I, I do feel inspired by her all the time when I see her sharing honest accounts of her journey um, and her kind of entrepreneurial processes and development because she's recently, um, I hope she won't mind me saying, she's recently gone back to, or she's taken a job in London. So she's moved away from essentially being her own boss and she's gone back into a career environment. Now she did that for herself. She recognised that she she wanted to, to kind of go back and work, get back on that career ladder. And that in itself is inspiring because I think sometimes you can feel trapped when you own your own business, um, like I do, and like you know some of you will when you're listening to this, um, that you kind of feel like sometimes it controls you rather than you control it. And Victoria still has her businesses, which is fantastic. Um, and they are still thriving, I have to add. But she is working up in London in a corporate job and is absolutely smashing it. So shout out to you, Victoria. You are an inspiration to me and you are doing amazingly. Keep it up. The second inspirational woman I want to share with you is Holly Branson. Now, um, as the name says, really, you've probably guessed, Holly is um, the daughter of Richard Branson, um, who, you know, is essentially an incredible entrepreneur and founder and owner of Virgin, the Virgin Group really. Um, And in 2008, Holly essentially made the decision to join the Virgin Group with her father um, and is an active member of the senior team there. So she is 
really kind of active in the um, leadership team working across all of the Virgin companies and as well on the prospective new companies. Um, she is a chair member of Virgin Unite and a founder and trustee of Big Change which is a charity that focuses on improving the lives of young people in the UK. Um, now I follow Holly, um, I've connected with Holly on LinkedIn and aside from sharing the same name, <laughs> um, she shares some incredible, incredible kind of snippets of, of relevant things that are happening within the Virgin Group and within her life um, as a businesswoman and it's just hugely inspirational um i am you know whenever i see her posts come up i am inspired i feel instantly kind of empowered with that yes women yes we can we can do this kind of vibe so i really wanted to include holly in this podcast because you know the family in general the branson family are all doing incredibly well um, or not, not all doing incredibly well, that sounds a little bit patronising, but what they've achieved as a family and with, within the Virgin name is incredible. And I just think, you know, the, the Bransons are inspirational to me. Um, Richard is inspirational to me, but this is a women's, this is shouting out women. So Holly Branson and what she has achieved and, and the work that she's doing um, across the globe is just incredible and it is inspirational to me so yes she definitely is on there and i will include her link or a link to her in the podcast description below so you can go and discover her and catch up with what she's been doing if you would like to okay 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 so i promise i'm not being biased towards hollies but um i want to mention another holly who is hugely inspirational and that was instrumental in me starting um, or, or really kind of taking the reins and jumping in and launching this podcast earlier this year. Um, and this is Holly Tucker, MBE. So Holly has launched um, Holly & Co. She is the founder of Not On The High Street as well and also the lady behind the Conversations of Inspiration podcast, which I highly recommend if you haven't already listened. Um, so Holly and Holly & Co is essentially cheerleading the small business revolution in the UK. There are, or there have been in recent years, so many new small businesses, um, freelancers, sole traders, all of that jazz launching and starting up in the UK. There, there literally has been a revolution, um, as Holly says. So through Holly & Co, they, she wanted to kind of create a place, kind of a tribe of like-minded people um, changing the landscape for small businesses for the better, because it is a tough world, um, business in general, but getting a small business off the ground is even more tough. Um, and they kind of their ethos at Holly & Co is that they believe that anyone can build a business doing what they love and by doing that they themselves will live a happier kind of more positive fulfilled life and you know that's something that obviously we want to encourage um everybody wants everybody to be happy really you know the world is tough life is tough sometimes and so you know just why not go and be happy and so Holly & Co is a space and a kind of place where that is encouraged small businesses going out on your own chasing that dream is is encouraged and through Holly's weekly podcast conversations of inspiration where Holly meets um acclaimed founders and inspiring entrepreneurs and essentially sits down with them and hears their story and finds out what what led to them wanting to create their own incredible businesses um, and it's just a fantastically inspiring listen if you're looking for podcasts um, to kind of get involved with it is it is just incredible and every time I listen to one of um, Holly's podcasts I feel inspired I kind of I'm already sat there halfway through writing notes writing plans writing ideas and it just 
all the creativity flows and I just think that what she's doing is incredible and kind of cheerleading as she puts it the the small businesses of the UK is just something to 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 admire um so I will link um Holly's podcast um in the description to this episode and I will also link um the Holly and Co website where you can buy sort of amazing little small business supplies which are just great so you can find that in the description to this episode and I hope that if you haven't already discovered Holly and her podcast and Holly and Co then you will feel inspired after having done so so to be inspired by somebody is limitless really there is no limit to where they need to be based who they are what they look like where they come from you feel inspired already on automatically um, because of what they're putting out as a person or what they've achieved as a person their location doesn't matter and so these next few women are from across the globe um, and you know obviously the sun helps <laughs> in feeling inspired um, but the content and the things and the lifestyle and all of that that these women um, are are living and achieving is inspirational to me from my little room in West Sussex in England. Um, so the next woman that I am inspired by to no end is Jenna Kutcher. Now Jenna is from America so shout out to any US fans listening um, but Jenna is just fantastic. She is an educator, digital marketer, amazing podcaster and just absolutely incredible woman who's absolutely bossing it completely um so jenna was one woman in particular that i knew from the get-go that i had to feature and i first discovered her podcast probably a year into having the business and i would just sit there whilst i was working on pages sending emails out seeking advertisement and i would just lose myself in her podcasts and they are just fantastic tips for not only sort of business women or business owners but also for you know mindset and goal setting and all of that kind of stuff and it's just she's just another one of these women that i just think yes you are just absolutely smashing it and you are doing fantastically well and she is hugely happy she is a mum um i say she's hugely happy i hope she's hugely happy her life looks incredible um and again that goes back to me saying don't base it on the materialistic kind of instagram grid look but every time she talks about it she is living an amazing life and she is doing incredibly well so i want to talk to you a little bit about her podcast because there is nothing wrong with shouting out other women and what they're doing even though it might be something similar to you so she is the host of the goal digger podcast and it is incredible i highly recommend you get yourselves over and you listen to that if you haven't already so Jenna's podcast is kind of built around a live workshop style um, that is helping thousands of people around the world redefine success and chase bolder dreams as she puts it on her website. So essentially you're getting all this fantastic free advice from experts on how to kind of get stuck in, do the work that you need to do and tackle, you know, the really tough aspects of running a business that come up along the way and to essentially create the life that you dream of um she's incredible and her branding on her website is just i'm just in love with it so you know on another point i'm inspired by that i'm inspired by her branding and the way that she portrays her brand is inspirational to me as well as her as an individual and as a businesswoman um so jenna you are inspirational to me and to thousands and thousands of other people i am sure so hats off to you okay so inspirational woman number five i think we're on uh one two three 
one, two, three, four, yeah, five. <laughs> um, just bear with me whilst I'm horrific at maths there. Um, this young lady is from New Zealand. Now, many of you will know that I love New Zealand. It holds a very special place in my heart and I hope to be able to spend, you know, a good deal of my time in the future visiting the incredible country that is New Zealand. It is just amazing. Um, but this woman is doing some incredible things and although I've stepped away now from kind of working outdoors on a farm or with horses, it is still something that I love and to see a young woman like this young lady um, doing what she is doing and making such a positive change in the New Zealand agricultural industry is incredible and you know there is so much that the British agricultural industry and especially women in farming can learn from from this this woman um, so without further ado I'd like to introduce you to Laura Douglas so she is the founder of Real Country NZ and I will link you to her website I think I'll link to um, where you can then click and find her social um, accounts but the website gives you kind of more of an insight into what she is doing and kind of as, as it's as a relatively new concept and so she is kind of evolving every single day and her brand is growing every single day and she is doing some incredible things over in New Zealand so I will link that in the description to this episode. So Laura has essentially created a unique farm experience um, in the south so she offers activities like play clay shooting, archery, sheep mustering, shearing, um, feeding lambs and essentially just it's just a must do New Zealand experience but aside from that it's giving women in particular a incredible insight into farming, into agriculture, into the country way of living and I just think I just think she's doing incredibly well. Um, it's what an amazing what an amazing kind of business to launch because essentially it is a business um and you know laura is so passionate about what she is doing what she's offering and what she is kind of sharing with people what she is able to to teach so many people um and you know she's combining really good old-fashioned southern hospitality with a range of like incredible and unforgettable New Zealand experiences um, and I think you know from what started as a relatively small project she's now working with tourist boards, tourist um, organisations to give people visiting the country that incredible experience as well um, and I just think that you know there's so much stigma around women in farming and how there is you know, a cultural sort of attitude towards women in farming, especially in the UK, that that needs to change. And Laura is literally taking that, tackling it head on, and and just you know smashing that stigma um, because it does exist over in New Zealand. It's probably not quite as sort of you know prevalent as it is here, but. I just think what she's doing is amazing and, and she is a serious woman, young woman to feel inspired by and, and I am, she is on my list of people to meet, people to speak to and people to just, just I just want to listen to her story, I just think it's incredible and I want her to be able to, I want to, I really want to get, get involved in this like, you know, real country experience, I want to do it all. Um, and so yeah, I couldn't do this without shouting out her because I feel like I appear like a complete fangirl over social media to her from the other side of the world, um, but it comes from the best place because I truly do feel inspired by her from one business owner to another, especially a young business owner to another, you are doing incredibly well and long may that continue. Now this one is probably a little bit more of a lifestyle inspiration 
Um, now, I know I said at the beginning to not feel, to not kind of get drawn into the, the, the kind of trap of feeling inspired by somebody's social media lifestyle and I am basically going to tell you that is exact, that is exactly what I have done here. But I have spoken to this woman a couple of times over social media and have learned a little bit about, you know, a little bit more about the behind the scenes of of her lifestyle and her her lifestyle change as well, because that to me probably is where I feel more inspired um, and more kind of empowered and connected to this individual. Um, so her name is Eloise Stevenson. She is from New Zealand and you will probably recognize her Instagram account as artisanbaby.nz. Now she is living the dream, or she's living my dream basically, um, in New Zealand, just outside Auckland um, in the North Island with three beautiful greys, an incredible husband, um, and he looks incredible too, I might add, um, and some beautiful children. I think she has three, but I could be wrong. Um, and it is just, I mean, it just looks like heaven to me. Honestly, it is incredible. And she essentially, just to give you a bit of a background as to why I think I feel so inspired by her, is because she made the move from rural Sussex, which is essentially where I am from, to New Zealand and hasn't looked back since. And I just think that is an incredible thing to do and to chase your dreams, follow your passion and follow your heart as well is incredible because, you know, I've thought about it so, so, so many times. I think about it, I still think about it all the time. You know, I'm, I'm that in love with the country that I just, I just would love to live there. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't be that far away from my family. I just couldn't do it. And so for her to have had to, for her to have done that and taken that decision and created the lifestyle that she has, um, because it's important to kind of note that I think from the beginning when they first moved out there, the house was it didn't look anything like it does now, and the house now looks incredible. Um, so although I said don't let yourself kind of stumble down that road of feeling inspired by somebody's Instagram grid or Instagram account, she is the exception because I am, I'm inspired by her journey, her adventure and her kind of big bold leap from, from life in the UK to life in New Zealand and, and it's something that I would love to do and I think I know I, I know I won't do it and so to be able to, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to say live through, through her but for her to have that dream and to be living that lifestyle is just incredible and I get to see it, I get to engage with it and I'm realising that I sound like an absolute crazy person so I'm going to park that one there but she is one to follow um, if, you, if you love the New Zealand kind of lifestyle um, or you just want some beautiful beautiful images on your grid to refresh you know all the, the crazy stuff that sometimes can can appear um on the grid so i have linked her instagram account in the description below and i'm gonna leave that there because i do sound like a crazy obsessive fan which is not what i was hoping to do but it is incredible so yeah you are an inspiration to me eloise i think what you've done um is incredible and i love I love following your account and, and your life essentially. So <laughs> without sounding too crazy, I'm gonna leave that there and move on to the next woman because yeah, I do sound like a crazy person. So staying in New Zealand for now, for the next one, um, is, oh, essentially I want to share with you the Wilson sisters or introduce to you the Wilson sisters if you haven't already discovered them. Um, I do know that their show um, Keeping Up With The Kind Manowars has been played on Horse & Country TV fairly recently, I think last year. So some of you may have now heard of, of, of these girls, these women. Um, but I, you know, I, I wouldn't say that, that they're incredibly well known here. They are like the Kardashians um, in New Zealand, but not quite so much here. 
Um, and when I first went to New Zealand is when I first heard of of these sisters and it was actually one of the young girls that I was um, au pairing at the farm I was at with the horses um, who, who told me about them and said you have to watch them, you have to find out about them and I did and from the moment that I did I was just blown away. What they have done together is incredible. Um, so since 2012 the sisters have become widely known um, in New Zealand but also across the world for taming wild horses and especially the Kaimanawas and on my last trip to New Zealand which was January of last year I was lucky enough to meet Kelly Wilson. Honestly I had to try and not be a total fangirl because it was just incredible and I did get to meet a couple of the Kaimanawas that they had rescued from one of the musters and it was just incredible and I just think you know I'm so inspired by their drive especially Kelly's because she has since bought out and written a series of books and in 2013 following their kind of um, documentary essentially which was watched by over half a million New Zealanders um, as well as over in Australia as well um, but in 2013 Penguin Random House commissioned their autobiography which is called For the Love of Horses um, and was Kelly's first number one best-selling title um, and she actually gave me a copy when we were out in January and it was signed and I was like oh my gosh um, so yeah but but essentially coming back to to why I'm inspired by them um, and by Kelly in particular is that the work that she has done with these Kaimanawas is incredible and essentially saving them from from slaughter is it's just I just think it's something that I would I would love to do one day and and you can do it you can apply to um to, to take in one of these mustard kaimanawas um and i just think the work that they've done the dedication the passion the the de you know the determination is just it's just madness and i just think you know i would i could only dream to have the ability to work with horses the way that, that Kelly and, and Amanda and Vicky do um, but they are so essentially yeah they are a force to be reckoned with and on my list of inspirational women Kelly is certainly up there but, but Vicky and Amanda are too but meeting Kelly and witnessing her working with with these horses um, first hand was just incredible and yeah, she is on my list of inspirational women. So without sounding too crazy again, because I realise this is becoming a habit, um, I'm going to leave that there. But I will link you to Kelly's Instagram account where you can see some of her work. Um, she's a passionate photographer and has actually recently visited um, Australia to some of the areas where the bushfires um passed through and affected some of the Australian brummies, so they're Australian wild horses, um, and photographed them in their natural habitat, kind of recovering from from the wildfires, and, and her images are incredible. So I will link you to her Instagram where you can go and discover some of these and go and feel inspired by the work that she does and the books that she's produced and you know just the woman that she is because that that and that literally is as a woman she is inspiring to me so i will leave that there with 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 kelly and the wilson sisters and come back to the uk for one of my final inspirational women okay so the final woman who i am inspired by on a daily basis is jade holland cooper and some of you will know that she featured on our winter cover and I was lucky enough to be able to interview her for winter's cover story as well 
and she is the founder and owner of Holland Cooper Clothing, which she started at just 21 um, after turning down unconditional offers at the London College of Fashion and Central St. Martins. Um, and she actually chose to go to the, the Royal Agricultural University or Royal Agricultural College where the idea of Holland Cooper came from um, or was born essentially. Um, and I just, you know, if any of you follow Jade on Instagram or have bought pieces from Holland Cooper, you know, the brand that she has created is just fantastic. And as a British label, she is doing phenomenally well in securing a brand and, and creating a brand that is is timeless um, and is you know is, is supporting British manufacturing and kind of the heritage of British tweeds um, and wool kind of you know I just think she's she is doing incredibly well and she is a complete force to be reckoned with and ultimate kind of boss babe and I hate that word I do but she really really is and you know since having got married she's just absolutely smashing life at the minute and I'm sure there are times where things are hard things don't go well or you know within business there are there are obstacles that she has to overcome um but with a team of over 50 staff now <laughs> um and a number of flagship stores um, and a, an incredible wholesale business with loads of stockists around the world. Um, she is just doing incredibly well. So for me, as a business owner, to feel inspired by a fellow female in business, Jade is is one of those that I just think is doing incredibly well and doing it with such style and such kind of elegance um you know nothing gets in her way she is ruthless as a business owner but you have to be and she knows her brand so well she knows the values of the brand and you know she she, she wants to protect that and i think you know she's done that so well and there's probably times when it was so tempting to to kind of succumb to maybe things where the money was or where the opportunities were and instead she chose to protect her brand and and create that incredible label and that instantly recognizable kind of product base and i just think yeah as a business as a businesswoman from businesswoman to businesswoman she is inspirational to me and to many of you i am sure um, so I'm going to leave that there because again, I have waffled. You can just tell I love talking to you all so much. <laughs> um, but yes, I will leave that there with you and say goodbye for this week. And next week we've got something really special. It's a bit different, but special. And I hope you will enjoy it. And the spring edition of In The Country is available to order to pre-order now if you would like you will be entered into the golden ticket giveaway which is worth over 400 pounds um this time around so if you would like to do that you can visit the website at www.inthecountrymagazine.com or you can order through instagram by clicking the link in the bio and the instagram is at in the country insta and I will let you go and have a wonderful day and wonderful rest of your week and I will catch up with you soon. Thanks. <laughs>